Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I just want to put out a real quick video for you guys because a number of you actually reached out to me concerning an Intel Arc Alchemist GPU, which has been spotted on Geekbench. We also have another interesting story, which we'll get to in just a moment. Now, this specific entry is eyebrow raising for a couple of reasons. The first is that it's 512 execution units, which we believe is the flagship SKU. However, there are a couple of uh, interesting caveats, shall we say. So the first of which is that the amount of memory is being reported as just 12.7 gigabytes, which is wrong for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's obviously being misreported. Uh, we believe that the highest end SKU has 16 gigabytes of memory, which does make sense given it's going to release next year, of course. And I think 16 gigabytes of memory in a flagship just makes sense for a number of different reasons. So that's obviously something hinky going on with Geekbench or this particular sample. The second thing which is eyebrow raising is that the 512 execution units are running at just 1300 megahertz. Well, you know, 1329 if you want to be precise. This is actually far slower than the maximum reported frequency, which is 2.1 gigahertz. Furthermore, we also have performance results thanks to, well, again, Geekbench, which is always a treasure trove of joy. So this particular uh, set of numbers we're looking at and there are four runs here and they're scoring around 69 nice 1222 all the way down to the lowest end score which is around 65,000 so this is about on par with an RTX 2060 again that is a far cry from what we expect this GPU to sit out when it's finally released which is around an RTX 3070 ish now of course it's very likely that this is not final silicon. And by very likely, I mean almost certainly. If you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've been saying a number of times now that I believe we're gonna see these GPUs launch mobile first. Now this particular test platform is a 9600K. However, just for the nature of bringing up and all of that stuff, this could be a mobile variant or they're testing things internally. It's very hard to know, um, but yeah, my guess is that it's just a very early sample and these are not clock frequencies, which are even slightly appropriate for final retail. Well, obviously there's no way they're gonna release a flagship SKU, which is RTX 2060 levels of performance. It, 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 it's just ridiculous. They're not gonna do that. Um, I am hearing though, you know, just to repeat myself, that the performance of this GPU is actually fairly decent in terms of ray tracing and Intel's XESS, which is its upsampling tech, does seem to be, from what I'm hearing anyway, actually quite well received. It's gonna be very interesting to see in the longer term anyway, how all of this plays out, particularly against Nvidia's DLSS. Either way, this is a great sign that the SKU is actually being bought up, or rather Intel Arc itself is being bought up. And of course, Alchemist is the first generation of Intel discrete GPUs, which is going to be launched. And Intel are gonna be pushing these across not only uh, desktop, but as I've mentioned a moment ago, they're gonna be seemingly focused on mobile first. So I still don't have a release date for you guys. Um, it seems that early Q1, is going to be the launch of the mobile variants. However, it's possible, uh, I mentioned this yesterday's video, that we could see the desktop SKUs actually launch even a little later, um, which would kind of be interesting in the grand scheme of things, given the launch date of like RDNA 3 and all of this stuff. Again, I have heard personally that it's not gonna be too long until we see uh, Intel's um, Alchemist replaced, but it's, yeah, this, I don't know, I, I don't want to say that it's a test architecture because I don't think that's fair, but it definitely is an architecture which Intel are releasing to essentially establish themselves. In a way, it kind of reminds me of RDNA 1 in that respect. I don't mean that RDNA 1 was a bad architecture or it wasn't performant, but if you look at it in, you know, in terms of where it sat in the marketplace in terms of performance, and just what it was accomplishing, in many ways, it just kind of did what AMD needed it to do. Obviously, it was missing features like hardware-based ray tracing, yes, 
but it was actually AMD's kind of stopgap. It was their way to kind of move from GCN to an entirely different architecture designed around graphics. And I, you know, I did put out a video back in like March 2019 that I really discussed this quite in depth. That AMD had been planning this shift for a while. That Nave was basically designed around the purpose of fixing the weaknesses of uh, GCN. And obviously their longer term roadmap was to include features like hardware-based ray tracing. And again, I discussed this back in March of 2019. So it's just really interesting that we're starting to see Intel take this kind of step. I mean, obviously Raja Kodori is at the helm. So possibly that could be one of the reasons that we're seeing some of this stuff mirrored, but not all of it by any means. Uh, and while we're on the subject of GPUs, I'd also like to discuss memory. So Samsung are actually in the current process of developing DDR6, yep. But yeah, despite the fact that the majority of us are still not even considering our upgrade to DDR5, of course, progress never stops. So 12,800 memory is currently being in development over at Samsung. And furthermore, we're seeing GDDR6 Plus to offer up to 24 GBPS and also GDDR7 as well is going up to 32 GBPS. Now, of course, it goes without saying that this is for next generation GPUs. And I have already mentioned, I believe in a video, that NVIDIA have already been investigating um, their moves towards GDDR7. It'll be very interesting to see which generation of GPU actually houses GDDR7. I'm going to probably make the assumption that it's going to be Hopper, which is naturally an MCM design. And uh, yeah, Hopper is going to be absolutely just ridiculously powerful. Obviously, Hopper represents the end of monolithic dies, well, at least for flagship products from NVIDIA. So I'm going to be very curious about this because in terms of memory bandwidth, it's going to be absolutely just insane. Like, you could have a fairly narrow memory bus, say 256 bit, just for sake of argument, and that's about a terabyte of sec per second of memory bandwidth, like a terabyte a second. And obviously, you know, if you were to go with like an, a, you know, a wider bus, like 384, you're looking at 1.5 terabytes a second, 512 is just, it's crazy town, obviously, it's twice that of, uh, of uh, 256, so it's two terabytes a second. So you can really quickly start to create a GPU which has just monstrous amounts of performance. But given the level of performance that we are starting to move into now, it's not really surprising. I mean, just look at the performance targets of RDNA 3 and Lovelace and so on, and imagine how this is gonna to continue to scale in the future. Even with smart cache systems like, like Infinity Cache, yeah, you still need to feed the beast, right? With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.